Hello Whiskey Taste Trippers, welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I'm your host Mark and this is Whiskey Review number 115. Uh, Glen Glassa Revival Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey uh, from Scotland. It's a Scottish uh, whiskey and it's known as Glen Glassa, I do believe. Uh, at least according to uh, Stuart Buchanan, uh, who is the um, uh, brand ambassador for um, uh, this brand, Glen Glassa, and a couple of others, one of which is Ben Riek, and the other being Glen Dronach, all part of the same parent company now. Um, right, Glen Dronach, uh, Glen, Dronach Glen Glassa Revival. Uh, why is it called Revival? That's because the, the distillery was closed for a period. It reopened in 2008. And um, uh, anyway, the, uh, the new whiskey that started late, very late 2008 uh, would have been only about seven or eight years uh, when they released this particular product. Okay, uh, so that's quite interesting. It's 46% ABV. It is natural in color and it's non-chill filtered. So everything that we want, uh, at least the minimum that we want, from distilleries uh, to give us as far as that kind of craft presentation uh, as some call it okay um, this is uh, uh, first and refill bourbon casks that's the initial maturation uh, and then the whiskey spends six months in first fill Oloroso sherry casks so that's pretty interesting to my taste buds uh, this tastes uh, very very strongly of sherry uh, more so than a lot of others. And I think that's because it's first fill. So that's pretty cool. Now, before we get on to the tasting notes, uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the distillery first of all, okay? Um, so it's a Highland single malt, although it's very, very close to the Speyside region. And uh, so close that on Wikipedia, it's listed as a Speyside. However, on the uh, box here, we can see clearly that it says Highland. Um, discrepancy, well, let's remember that Speyside, in fact, is within the Highlands. Uh, it happens to be one area located close to the River Spey, hence Speyside. Um, so uh, I believe it would be acceptable for uh, Speyside whiskeys if they wish to call themselves Highland. Uh, however, Highland whiskeys that are not in the Speyside region cannot call themselves the Speyside. Uh, okay, and it's located in uh, P-O-R-T-S-O-Y, Portsoy, Banff, Banffshire, Banffshire, uh, the, the town of Portsoy. Um, the area was chosen because of its proximity to the Glassa Springs. The, uh, the, is that a burn? The water that comes out of the ground there, okay. Uh, 1875 is the foundation date by uh, James Moir and his nephews, Alexander and William Morrison. Um, and uh, 1892, uh, it ended up getting sold to Highland Distillers, with whom it remained until 2008 and became a subsidiary of Edrington. Um, 1960, it was rebuilt. They doubled the production. 1986, the distillery went silent. Uh, 1986, I believe, to 2008. So 22 years of silence. Quite a long silent period. Um, and uh, it was restarted by a group of investors known as, I believe, uh, Scant, S-C-A-E-N-T. Um, and they did the, uh, well, kind of like, it's, I guess it's de rigueur. It's kind of the par for course. You start the distillery and you release some unaged whiskey, unaged spirit, known as spirit drink in the UK. And then eventually you can release the three-year-old whiskey. Uh, anyway, 2013, it was sold to the Ben Riek Distillery Company, which also owned Glendronach. And I've got a Ben Riek glass here. I don't have a Glen Glass of glass. Uh, hopefully someone will change that. I, oh my God. This is the great thing about these Glencairn glasses. They are very sturdy. Whew, didn't break it. Okay. So it's a Ben Riek glass and, uh, 
Uh, I got that at the tasting for Ben Riek not that long ago. Um, now, the story doesn't end there. So Ben Riek took over the brand, and uh, uh, they were voted... Um, oh, so many awards for that company, uh, including Billy Walker, who is the master distiller of all three of the um, uh, distilleries. But uh, anyway, early 2016, there was a word on the street of... Uh, the, uh, the the group, uh, the Ben Riek Distillery Company, being sold to an even larger conglomerate. And it's true, and that is Brown Foreman. Now, if you're curious, I have a... Well, actually, no. Um, no, skip that. But anyway, there's lots of information out there now about that acquisition, okay? Um, so it's a Brown Foreman brand. Brown Foreman are the owners of perhaps the biggest selling... Uh, one of the biggest selling, one of the biggest selling whiskeys in the world. The biggest selling are now Indian uh, whiskeys. But uh, for America, I believe uh, Jack Daniels is the number one selling whiskey. And Jack Daniels is also owned by, by Brown Foreman. Okay, I should have poured this already. Let's get that ready. And we'll get it poured. Here we are. Okay, that's good. Let's call it 40 milliliters, give or take. Very nice bottle. Um, stout, classy, nice wooden cork also. Not a composite cork, but a, a actual full grain uh, bit of cork there. So quite nice. And um, yes, Sherry. Hello, Sherry. Nice to see you again. Okay, so let's get on to the nosing and the tasting for this one. And before that, we'll have a short advertisement right here. Okay, welcome back. Glen Glassa Revival, 46% ABV, all natural in color and non-chill filtered. Yes, a lot of sherry on the nose here. And to think this is only six months in Oloroso Sherry, First fill Oloroso Sherry. Incredible. The bourbon really takes a back, uh, back step, back step, back, back seat here. <laughs> mm. It's spicy, no doubt. And there's some youthfulness to this as well. This is a not a not a long aged whiskey, but it's a well aged one. Okay, by the way, color-wise, basically, uh, rich gold is what I've written here. So a nice golden hue. Okay, onto the nose. I wrote here, great wood, bright sherry, oak timber. Okay, so the smell of, the smell of a, uh, a timber shop. McDermott's Lumber used to be near where I lived back in Winnipeg. That's the smell you would get walking into the timber area. Um, uh, vanilla, red grapes, green Thompson raisins, golden raisins. There's a hint of peat zest here. And then there's some orange and citrus and orange jellies, citrus jellies. And an orange flavored black tea. Lots of tea today in the whiskeys that I've tried. This is number four, by the way. Hmm. Very busy nose for a young whiskey. Okay. Cheers, everybody. And cheers to uh, Billy Walker, as well as Mr. Stuart Buchanan, who I had the chance to meet, uh, I guess that was last May. An interview. There's an interview of me with... Um, Stuart Buchanan, the global ambassador for Glen Glassa, Glendronic, and also Ben Riek. Okay, let's try that. Big Sherry Rush followed by some sweetness.
there's a lot of astringency here. Kind of like the unripened persimmon. Okay. Um, I wrote here, tangy sweetness. Young whiskey effervescence. Uh, I can feel that on my tongue. A little bit nippy, but in a pleasant way. Okay. Spicy cinnamon, some clove. Um, the fruit I'm, I'm tasting here is oranges, but also ripe melon. Um, there's a slight little bit of this chalky high astringency. That's the um, unripened persimmon that I mentioned. Okay. Um, Some buttered raisin toast, cherry flavored Hall's lozenges. There's a little bit of a savory note as well, some bay leaf. Okay, how about the finish? Melon, tinned pineapple and also papaya, a very ripe papaya. Papaya. Uh, yes, I'm a child of the 70s, and hence Seinfeld was really big for me. Papaya. Um, there's a little hint of wood smoke here. And then after the flavors have uh, receded, you've got kind of a dry a little bit of a dry mouthfeel left in your mouth. Obviously, it's a mouthfeel. Okay, finish-wise, for such a young whiskey, it's very long. Um, I can still taste it. It hasn't dissipated. There's still some melony flavors, papaya, fruit, um, and this dryness here. Okay, so pretty long a pretty long finish. Uh, let's get some water added. I think we can safely add a good teaspoonful here. Teaspoon, that's a half teaspoon, by the way. Okay, about two and a half milliliters. Does it say there? I didn't measure it. No, it just a stainless. I have a milliliter um, uh, little spoon measure, milliliter, and so on. So anyway, it doesn't take three. It takes about two and a bit. Three, with three, you get uh, the menis, uh, menis, meniscus. You get the overflow, the little bubble on top, okay? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. We'll get it mixed up. So uh, since that initial news of Brown Foreman acquiring the brand, there's been a lot of just silence. So in my opinion, it seems as though uh, the parent, Brown Foreman, are letting the subsidiary, uh, Ben Riek Whiskey Company, just to do its thing and um, uh, get on with business. So that's good. Um, what I did say uh, is that I just hope that, you know, it'll give them more, more channels uh, more relationships in the industry and another thing that they'll get uh, will be more access to uh, excellent casks okay so that that can't be discounted so it's not always a bad thing when these um, large companies take over small distilleries um, you can have ethical big business you can have unethical small business uh, so, you know, don't just discount it uh, because they're big. Um, that would be um, erroneous. Okay, on to the nose now with water. Uh, this is Glen Glassa Revival. And we'll have one more short advertisement right here. Welcome back, Glen Glassa Revival with water now, just a little bit. A lot more orange is coming out. Lots of orange smoothness. 
sweetness, I should say, not smoothness. You don't, you don't smell smoothness. But it isn't as sharp as before. Um, there's a salty character coming through. And I wrote here, salted fresh butter. Uh, fresh butter. Fresh butter, like French butter. Anything else? Uh, buttered sweet biscuits. Deeper raisins. And there's a bit of medium chocolate. A lot drier on the palate. But it really straightens out that youth. It's sweeter, it's maltier. There's more melon. Milk chocolate is added in here now. Uh, some white chocolate as well. It's smooth now, it's juicy. A little bit bigger on the spice too. Hmm. Oh, very dry. These first bill casks, both the bourbon um, and also the Oloroso, are really putting a lot of tannins in here, which make it spicy. Uh, but, you know, if you don't like the dry style of wines, this may not be for you. Um, I love dry wine. I like dry, heavy wines. So this is good for me. What about the finish? Hmm. There's a touch of pepper at play now. Still got the spice there. Rocky, please be quiet. And uh, melon with a little bit of ham. Rocky, quiet now. Very long finish. Dry and yet sweet. Rocky, quiet. Okay. Hold on just one moment. Okay, someone just came in. Who's that? <clears throat> okay, so touch of pepper, melon, uh, some spice, a little bit of ham in fact. So uh, ham and melon, like prosciutto and melon going on here. All right, very nice whiskey. I found it quite young at first. But you give it time, you let it breathe, you add a bit of water, and uh, uh, you really get a sense of um, the quality that's in here. Uh, the wood management is amazing. Um, and price-wise, this is very reasonable. Um, I believe it was about $70 Canadian um, back in Winnipeg. And um, that's, that's great especially for 46%, especially for um, uh, something that is presented so naturally, okay? Um, so, what will the whiskey whistle, whiskey score be for Glen Glassa Revival? I'm gonna give it a solid 85 out of 100. That's the whiskey whistle, whiskey score for Glen Glassa Revival. And we're gonna call this one the uh, Sherry Bourbon Connection, okay? Uh, very well made, very lovely, um, interesting flavors going on here, worth trying, and um, this will give you an indication of what's to come for the company. Uh, there's also the Torfa, which I'm interested in. I haven't tried yet, but I will hopefully at some point, okay? Well, so that's it for uh, this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe. Uh, you can click the link right down there in the corner and uh, like the review. Leave a comment if you've tried this or if you've tried any other Glen Glass of products. I'd love to hear about that. What are your opinions of this Brown Foreman acquisition? Uh, tell me what you think and um, uh, let's get in touch through the comments, okay? 
Take care, everyone. We'll see you for the next review uh, in a few days' time.